the upside in this deal, it's it's severely overparked. And we think um, if you, I'll put up a better picture on the map. But if you pull up the map, you can see every other shopping center in the corridor has carved out their pads for you know, a Canes or a Wendy's or, or a little pad site in front of the shopping center. And we can easily fit three, if not four pad sites in front of this property, just like you'd see up there where the Chevron is. You can bring those all the way over to the right of the screen, little pad sites. Um, and those could be worth a million or more a piece. And the lender is not requiring any principal pay down to release those sites, which is huge because that means that cash is coming straight in our pocket. What is up and what's going on? Welcome back to How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. We are back with another Monday episode. And we have been crazy busy this month. This is the month of May in 2022. And we've had... We've got lots of deals going on right now. Got a lot going on. Tons of deals. And we always get feedback from the investors or, or people listening to the show that they love it when we go through deals that we just bought or we're about to close on or deals that we've had and just say you know, what we liked about them, what caught our eye, how we went through the process of it, how it's going maybe now post-closing, and just really take a deep dive into that property we just bought to maybe give somebody some help. Yeah, I think that's the big apprehension with most uh, new investors is they got all these deals, but they just don't know which ones to buy mm -hmm. or why, we, why they like a one deal better than the other deal. So today we've got a couple of deals that we're working on with Criterion, and we thought we'd just go through those and just give our thoughts to help people see why we picked these deals, what we liked about the underwriting, and see if that can help them find their own deal. Yeah, so let's start with um, the first one. It's called Village at North Shore, and it's um, in Slidell, which is right outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. So this one, um, initially, I think this was our fifth closing with the Woodmont Company. Mm -hmm. So a joint venture with them. It was a $12.5 million purchase price deal. A yeah, pretty good size deal for us. Yeah, 144,000 square feet anchored by... Ollie's, Marshall's, Dollar Tree, Joanne. Um, there's a brand new Aldi next to it. There's a Walmart Super Center next to it. There's a Sam's Club next to it. Okay, so that's the first point on, on why we like this location is we've got a, a nice strip center with decent tenants, some national credit, but we're shadow anchored by Home Depot and Super Center, Sam's Club, uh, Aldi's, all these great tenants. And those retailers don't go to you know bad locations. And so if you've got that kind of support around your center, you're going to get uh, good traffic, good advertisement. And so that was the first reason why we liked it. Yeah, those, those companies, they have teams based on looking at the demographics so they can figure out where to go, right? I mean, yeah. so a lot of those successful companies, you can't And all these were just that. opening. Yeah, right. Just uh, so they had up, just so. decided, hey, this is where we want to be. Yeah. And it's, based on it's current literally bus right up to the north side of the center. Yeah. Yeah, and Aldi's an interesting one because they have such a massive trade area. They don't have stores, you know, in every little podunk town. They they have a store, and they may draw from, you know, tens of miles into that location. So, I mean, that could be referred to as a co-tenant. I mean, if you're going into Walmart Supercenter or Sam's or Aldi or Home Depot, shopping at one of our tenants' stores makes sense. It's it's It makes sense that you do it on the same trip to go to Dollar Tree or Marshall's or Joanne or something like that. Um, so, yeah, we, we love that right away. All right, good. What was one of the other things we liked about it? Um, the traffic count, which right on the main thoroughfare, right on the corner, right? I can't remember what the traffic counts are there, but they were yeah, high. They were, I think, 25, 26,000 cars Total a day. Or, or on, I think on just one of those just, streets. Just on the main on road. The main I think road. the other one was like 13,000 cars. Yeah, okay, so you're pushing busy, about 40,000 total, but you're, you're right off of a highway. And once again, you have all those other tenants drawn. drawn. So I didn't, I didn't need just super high traffic. 40,000 cars at the intersection it's not too bad. is not too bad. Yeah, and I would say, you know, there's a, there's a brand new Canes right across the street. There was that brand new Aldi. So there's new development going into the area. There's some redevelopment um, of a trampoline park backfilling uh, a vacancy right mm -hmm. across the street. So those are all really good signs. You know, when you're going to an area of town and nobody's there and everything's vacant and nothing new and exciting or anything is going on, you should ask yourself why, but it, it's also true. The inverse, you know, if you see new tenants going in, if you see spaces that are in their second or third generation, you know, with a new exciting concept and, and all of this momentum, you can be trying to take advantage of that as well. Yeah. I think all of that was, that was good to see new retailers opening up was a big, was a big key for us. So I think another solid one is the, the acquisition cost. I mean, when we're looking at deals, there's an unlimited amount of beautiful, 
what I would call a trophy deal. You know, you want to put this thing as a trophy on the corner of your desk and let everyone know you see it. And this may not be that that center. I'm not saying it's a bad looking center, but are you going to put it on the homepage of your website? I don't know. Those centers, just full disclosure, they probably don't make a lot of money. This is not a five cap deal. This is not a six cap deal. This is... Yeah, we bought this at what? An eight cap, right? Yeah, north of an eight cap. I think it was like an 815. North yeah. of an eight cap uh, with upside... Uh, but also the price per per foot was not out of line. I think it was about a hundred dollars a foot less. I mean, we're at a twelve and a half million dollar purchase price and one hundred forty four thousand feet. Okay, so yeah, we're we're lower than a hundred dollars a foot, which is That's good nice. for an area with growing retail, with new retail going in right next to Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, brand new Aldi's. All that is a pretty good sign. Right. Right. So what what I'm hearing so far is we've got good downside protection. You know, we've got steady cash flow and an eight cap. You, there's no reason why you shouldn't be cash with a good loan. Eight cap. You're going to we've done shows on it. You're going to be able to cash flow pretty well. Yeah. You, you mentioned good loan. I, I think that's a great point of why we've got center. We got a, a loan from First National Bank of Louisiana, I believe. And it was 80, 82 and a half percent, I think. TV. LTV, LTV. Um, so almost a $10 million loan on a $12.5 million purchase price. Great deal. They gave us a little bit of interest only to get our new management systems in place, get some leases renewed. And this is a this is a big one. The upside in this deal, it's it's severely overparked. And we think um, if you, I'll put up a better picture on the map. But if you pull up the map, you can see every other shopping center in the corridor has carved out their paths for you know, a Canes or a Wendy's or, or a little pad site in front of the shopping center. And we can easily fit three, if not four pad sites in front of this property, just like you'd see up there where the Chevron is. You can bring those all the way over to the right of the screen, little pad sites. Um, and those could be worth a million or more a piece. Mm. And the lender is not requiring any principal pay down to release those sites, which is huge because that means that cash is coming straight in our pocket. Straight no, that, our that's investors. a big one. And when you, when you look at how the site is laid out, there's six ingress egress uh areas so there's plenty of ways to get in which helps convince uh pad sites to to go in there because lots of traffic flow there's not just one way into this center and and so that helps us as well and like you say on the lender not requiring us to pay down the loan that's that's another thing when we look at these centers uh there may be some initial metrics that we like but then everything else has got to fall into place. And so when we look at out parcels, okay, well, do we have the ingress, egress we need for those out parcels? Do we have the space? Yes. Okay, now, uh, do we, can, we get the, can we get to the upside? And here the lender's uh, allowing us to get to that upside. When we sell those pads, we get to pocket that cash for the investors. Yeah, that's nice. What about uh, rents? Is that another upside? Is it, are the existing rents pretty low on this that property? Is, or? That is a great question. That is a great question. The rents are, I wouldn't say they're super low, but they're definitely... Uh, under market, under market, you know no. they're a little low. So I, they could I don't be raised see over the next few years. They could be pushed over the next few years for sure. Yeah, you've got some strategic renewals. I know Marshalls is renewing soon. Our partners know the the Marshalls real estate guys really well. Um, so I think we'll get a renewal there. Um, and we've got some TAI um, tenant improvement dollars marked for these renewals. Um, how? Uh, let's tell people how much cash are we taking into this deal for protection. You know, I don't have an exact number. It's six to seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, Very and then easily. we and then we have. I mean, there's no doubt we're going to do at least two, three pads, maybe four. Correct. And so that'll that'll increase our cash too once we once we offload those. Plus, there's really not a lot of deferred maintenance on this one, right? So we're not going to have to dip into that. We don't think too much. Yeah, I I think you may have maybe up to a hundred thousand of roof repairs. Maybe realistically, it's probably fifty, you know, thousand of roof repairs. Um, maybe a little landscaping cleanup, maybe, you know, touch up the signs a little bit, um, get some better visibility in there. Overall, structure and parking is in pretty good shape. Yeah, and and another hot point is we got, uh, we leased space while we were in contract <laughs> to a mattress store. So the end cap of the center is leased and, and that was taken into account. But it, what's really interesting is without any pad sites, without any out parcel sales, without anything, starting day one, just assuming everything is as it is now, the investor is going to get 11 plus percent cash on cash return yes. into their into their mailbox. And what, what's the IRR that we plugged in without any pad sales? Do you know? I think t uh, without any pad sales, I don't know. With the pad, set, pad site sales, it was like 22, 23 um, percent. But what I would say is after we do one pad site sale, um, those funds are a return of equity. So it pays back like a third of the equity. So then our 11% cash on cash goes to 15, 18% almost yep. immediately. Yep. So the cash on cash is aggressively increasing because of the return of capital from the pad side sales. 
Nice. No, so overall, what we do is when we find a deal, uh, we, we begin to go through our, our metrics. We want to know what the traffic counts are, the price per foot. How does the rent, uh, are the rents in line with market? Is there any cap, CapEx that's needed? Do we have a good loan? All of these things, we just keep checking the boxes. Yeah. And if nothing derails it, uh, then we just keep going forward. And on, on this deal, there, weren't, there wasn't anything that caused us enough concern to stop the process. And we think it's going to be a great opportunity for both for us and the investors. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is one I think um, we closed on a few weeks ago. We went down to New Orleans, check it out. It looked great. Um, it, was, it was a great deal. Yeah. All right, so we got one more that we're going to to go over really quickly for you guys. Uh, hopefully, we'll also put up pictures on this one. But Atlanta, or outside of Atlanta. Yeah, Stone Mountain. Outside Ma of Atlanta. Stone Mountain, Georgia. What did I even just say? I don't know. Oh, outside of Atlanta. It's in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, this one looks almost like every other center we own, which is good. They should start to look alike. Otherwise, you don't have your investment criteria honed enough. If you go to our website and you look at the stuff we own, you're going to find like yeah. two different pictures and, and every center could look like those yeah, two pictures. Yeah, that's true. And that's good. People call us and they say, hey, I have something that looks like everything else you buy. Do you want another sure. one? And it yeah. makes it very easy for me to say yes. Yeah. This is in Stone Mountain, Georgia. You may ask, guys, why are you buying Stone Mountain, Georgia? Because we found the center. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, the center checked a lot of boxes. The number one thing I liked when I first saw it is it is right on a very hard corner uh, intersection yeah, across from a, su a super center. Walmart super center. Yeah. yeah. And so that right there, I really liked it. It has, it's right on the hard corner, both sides uh, of the center. You'll be able to see it in the pictures. Yeah. Traffic like counts are, are like north of 50,000 yeah. cars a day. Yeah. So that was the number one thing I liked about it. So what's next? Yeah. What, what I loved is I love, you know, I love a little bit of vacancy to lease it up, but at the same time, there's nothing like a proof of concept, like a 100% occupied center. And yep. This one is not only 100% occupied. It is 100% occupied with not only one, but two ground leases and a billboard, which is mm -hmm. saying this is the spot to be. If you want to rent parking, if you want to rent a sign, if you want to get visibility, if you want to own a small little business, this is the spot to be. They don't have any availability left. And then when you're looking at the rents, the rents are not, they're not super high. Yeah. I, I think I could push them. I think they were low on this. Let's give a couple there. of examples on the rents just, just so they know what we mean by low or high. Yeah, so let's let's go with the super common one. Dollar General, you'll find them in almost every of the 50 states. You'll find them everywhere. Yeah. And the reason why is because they will always move, right? If their rent gets too high in a specific market and a developer can build them a building that's brand new for 9 or $10 foot in a reasonable trade area, Dollar General is going to say, okay, let's move. Yeah, so their rents, I would say most of my experience is 8 to $12 a foot. Okay. Yep. For about 10, 11,000 square feet. This Dollar General is right in line with their footprint. You know, we're, I think we're less than 10 or 11,000 square feet, and our rent is 435 per foot mm -hmm. per year. There is 0% chance anyone yeah, can get close either. to this site with these traffic counts, with this visibility, anywhere close to that rent. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Now, we are limited, a little bit limited on the upside because they have built-in options. Sure. With some increases. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be able to pop them to $10. But what we like is the, the security that they're at such a low rent, at such a high traffic count center, that they're not going anywhere, or at least most likely are not going to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah you've got um, another anchor, which is a beauty supply place. I love beauty supply stores. They've got you know a, a great... They, they should have great margin. They've typically got a shipping container behind every single one of their stores packed to the brim full of more product that they can sell. I think their cost of goods is is nothing. And and they're they're busy. We were on site on a Wednesday at 10 a.m. And there was half a dozen people walking in the door when we were poking our head and another almost dozen just walking around the store looking for beauty yeah. supply stores. I think it's one that... Uh, is not going to be taken away by Amazon just because of the nature of, you know, trying it on, looking at it. And this is the perfect demographic for, for one of those um, stores. So let's talk about some of our other metrics. Uh, deferred maintenance. Uh, I think the parking lot's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's in good shape. Uh, yeah. We have we had a property condition report that suggested that we needed, uh, you know, $100,000 to $200,000 in CapEx reserve. So we raised that. Yeah, I think we raised almost double what the property condition report said. Uh, report said. Just because we hadn't gone and visited the property yet, we were buying it on an auction platform, which we've discussed, which was uh, you know inherently risky because if you're uh, 
inability to get out of it. You know, mm-hmm. you're wiring them these massive deposits and everything. So we're going in with $350,000 in, in day one cash. It's hundred percent occupied. It's going to be cash flowing literally the day we own it. The day of closing, we made tons of money. The day after closing, we're making money. Approximately what cap rate are we buying it at? Did you write that down? 8.45. Okay. Yeah. I mean, guys, uh, in, in the hot real estate market we're in, it may change with interest rates going up, but yep. eight and a half cap deals yeah. are not easy to find unless there's some real risk to them. And we feel like this pr- provides a pretty low risk profile for that kind of a cap rate. And so then let's let's segue that into the loan. We were able to get an 85% loan yep. at four and a quarter. We almost got it at three eight five, guys. I yeah, mean, I mean they raised seven five. They raised the uh, the rates half a point on us, or we'd have been at three seven five. And yeah. remember, Brian and I just did a show on how to make forty percent of your money. And remember, what was the model? It was an eight and a half cap deal with a four and a quarter yeah. uh, uh, interest rate added on an eighty percent LTV. <laughs> yeah. So here we're at eighty five. Yeah. yeah. And, and so when I said we do these deals every day, we do them every day. Yeah, we didn't know about this deal when you guys filmed that episode. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, so, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. And I hope I hope we're motivating somebody out there. These properties, it's, I mean, put, put it back up again. It's not new and shiny. Um, it, it's not in Tulsa. It's not in some uh, of the fastest growing sub markets that you can Google in commercial real estate online. It's, there's, there's nothing fancy about this deal. We formed an investment criteria that we agree on and we buy properties all over the country. And if you do that, it, it works, right? Because you're paying attention to things. You're not just buying some random property in some random city. Got, yeah, and don't get caught up with, with new and flashy. Uh, some people do that and you can, if you have money to spend and you want to buy the, the trophy property, cause you know, sometimes they advertise that trophy property located in Miami. <laughs> if it says trophy, I'm out yeah. Yeah, you're not making uh, money because you're not going to make a ton of money. Or if you are, you're going to have to really take advantage of long-term appreciation because of the location. But we're, di- we're cash flow buyers. We're day one cash flow buyers. And that's what these properties, uh, deliver. And it's about risk return profile. So you say it's not the sexiest deal. It, it isn't. Uh, but for the risk that we're taking versus the return that we're getting, that's the profile we're looking for. I can get less risky, but it'll lower my return. So there's right. a sweet spot that we're looking for to, to deliver above average returns for lower risk to our investors. And yeah. this, this center checked that box for us. Yeah. Does this center have, it doesn't have the upside without parcels, right? But what about a ground lease? Can you, uh, can you make some money off of a ground lease? Do you sell the ground lease? Um, the Waffle House is on a ground lease, right? Yeah, you could easily carve that off. Somebody's going to pay us more than an eight and a half cap. And by more, I mean maybe a seven cap, maybe a six and a half cap. Yes. You could make okay. two points on the Waffle House NOI just by carving it off and, and putting it yeah. on the market for yeah. sure. Good. Um, we try to do that with a lot of our other centers. It's 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 a great little strategy. What uh, mm-hmm. Maybe I could do this real quick. What is the, uh, the NOI on the Waffle House? What is the rent? Mm. Do some quick math. If we can, if we can get that, I don't want there to waste yeah, too it's, much time. It's right here. Waffle House ground lease pays sixteen thousand five hundred a year. Okay, not a ton. So uh, that's pretty cheap, actually. Super cheap. So when that, how many years are left on that? A uh, year and a half. So that means that the the Waffle House at an eight and a half cap, we paid one hundred ninety five thousand for that. Uh, that income stream. Okay. And so what if I take that same, was it 16.5? 16.5. Yeah. And I put that on a, a six cap. Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's 275,000. So right there's 80,000, not a ton of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, if we raise that yeah. income when their lease is up, I don't right. know about the options. These are all, I mean, little upside, but yeah. once again, 80,000 is 80,000 and the equity raise wasn't, wasn't huge on, on this. So that's, that's probably 4% return on the equity just in, you know, potentially doing something with that right. ground lease. Nice. Yeah, and I, I love just the the thought about that, right? We had a guy come on who buys rent houses that are too big and sells excess land. I mean, we looked mm-hmm. at a deal today with a guy who doesn't spend any money. He signs a bunch of free rent tenants. I mean, everyone's got their, their shtick. Everyone's got their business plan. Everyone's got their perception of how they look at deals and, and where they see the value is. But the idea is everyone's got a plan to to do something right. Nobody's just coming in and saying, this looks fine. I guess we'll just sit on it for a couple decades. See what happens. Well, th- well you say that, but like on the village of North shore, they have the, the largest parking lot in the area and didn't do any, uh, any out parcels. Yeah, it's, right. I don't know why. Yeah. Right. We bought a deal here in Tulsa from a REIT, uh, you know, a really big, uh, real estate investment trust publicly traded. Uh, and 
you know, as soon as I bought it from him, I started carving out the out parcel. And I've already got an offer for 700000 for a patch of parking lot on a deal that a bigger company, better, smarter, more experienced owned, more and they people. never did it. I don't know why they didn't do it. No. Uh, but once again, that's one thing that, that we we do when we look for, for deals is those out parcels for, for value add. Yeah. So what I would say is if you're listening to this, if you're watching this and you're saying, man, this seems interesting, man, I, I would love to be involved on a property like this or understand how to do it. You should, you should sit back and appreciate we, we just raised over just under, just under, it was like 3.8, 3.9 million dollars in, in investor equity to put in these two deals and they will send out their first distribution, not next year, not next quarter, but at the end of this quarter, at the end of this quarter, $4 million will earn 11% cash on cash. I mean, prorated so just for the quarter, month. but right. th this year. This this quarter, this quarter, these two properties are going to pay our investors over a hundred thousand dollars. This quarter, and there's so many people out there that have money in the bank uh, that don't know what to do with it. It's not earning eleven percent, and once again, that's just the cash on cash. We're we're delivering you know seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two percent. Yep, and we've already discussed how important it is to get a high rate of return. Yep. and so the idea is these deals exist, whether through us or buying them on your own or with another sponsor, uh, but don't wait to get that money invested because you don't know what to do. If you've listened to this podcast, you know what we're doing. You know what other people are doing. Get your money in the game. Yeah. If you want to get your money involved in properties like this, the first step you need to do is go to our website, thecriterionfund.com. There's a big button in the top right-hand corner that says join our investor list. You're going to hit that button, type in your name and email address, and then boom, you will get sent every deal, including these two, including the ones we're going to close on next month and the month after that. You're going to get them in your inbox it's going to say, hey, do you want to invest in this? And you can say yes. You can ignore it like most of the people on there. Mm -hmm. But most people that invest, invest within the first 24 hours. A lot of deals are filling up fast. The village at uh, North Shore. Village at North Shore, that sold out in 17 hours. Yeah. 17 hours, we hit the email out to the limited partners at Friday at 5. And by Sunday morning, it was completely full. And, and before we close, I'll tell you, we got a couple deals in the works. Got a big deal that we're, we're working on with Criterion. It's not finalized yet, but that'll be coming if we can get it finalized in the next 30, 45 days. Precision Equities got uh, a deal. It's a smaller deal. It's going to fill up very fast in Overland Park, Kansas, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic suburb of Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, and so if you are interested, get signed up on the list because you want to be able to see those. Yep. All right, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Share with somebody who you think might be interested, and we will catch you next week on how to invest in commercial real estate. Thanks, guys. Thanks.